Obi-Wan Kenobi is arguably one of the most important characters in all of Star Wars. I mean, hey, the guy's space Jesus. This guy basically raised Anakin Skywalker, the chosen one, and overcame some of the most tragic events anybody could ever experience. Obi-Wan might have experienced the most loss out of anybody in all of Star Wars. First, he lost his father figure in Qui-Gon Jinn. Then he lost his son slash brother who he trained his entire life and he eventually had to kill with his own hands. He lost the love of his life, Satine Kryze. He also lost the only family he had ever known his entire life with the Jedi Order during Order 66. With Order 66, he was also betrayed by people he called his brothers, who was then basically cast out of society, forced to live in a desert where he protected a child. All that, only for him to eventually be killed by the person he thought he had previously killed, who was also the person he raised. And that's not even to mention the guy during the Clone Wars that hunted him down for most of his life, Darth Maul. Kenobi! So what if instead of all that, Obi-Wan left the Jedi Order to be with Satine? If he didn't know this, Obi-Wan was a bit of a player, and he was absolutely in love with the Duchess of Mandalore, Satine Kryze. Remember, my dear Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan starts to fall in love with Satine much earlier in the Star Wars story when they're on a mission on Mandalore to protect Satine. During this time, there's a civil war on Mandalore going on and there's bounty hunters after Satine. So in order to protect Satine, Qui-Gon Jinn sends his Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi with Satine Kryze off-world where they live as fugitives together. During this time, they start to realize, hey, we have a lot in common and they start to fall for each other. He even mentions later on that he would have left the Jedi Order if only she had asked. Had you said the word, I would have left the Jedi Order. That is touching. Truly it is. But you know what? Let's let's say she did ask, and he accepts. The most likely time she would have asked him to do that would have been towards the beginning of the Clone Wars when they actually see each other again. So he accepts. My shining Jedi Knight to the rescue once again. After all these years, you're even more beautiful than ever. After years of thinking about each other and not really seeing each other, seeing each other again brings up a lot of feelings and they get together. Obi-Wan would have left the Order, he would have joined Satine on Mandalore, and they basically would have raised a family together. Anakin would have been passed off to another Jedi Master, most likely either Master Yoda or Master Windu. And as for Ahsoka, she probably would have just went to Plo Koon like it was originally planned. Obi-Wan probably still would have been involved with the Clone Wars as it went on because he still had attachments to the Jedi and he wanted to protect the galaxy because he's just a good guy. But because he would be with Satine on Mandalore, a united Mandalore would be helping the Republic against the Separatists. That means Mandalore would have been a lot more involved in the Clone Wars. Obi-Wan also would have stayed in contact with Anakin because they were just really close. And because Anakin looked up to Obi-Wan so much, I think Anakin also would have left the Jedi Order to be with Padme. All of this changes the Clone Wars drastically. As you know, Darth Maul during the Clone Wars was just set out for revenge on two people. Obi-Wan Kenobi because he felt like he ruined his life, which it did because he cut him in half and his former master, Darth Sidious. Darth Maul, probably not knowing about Anakin leaving the Order, would have done exactly as he did in the Clone Wars and tried to take over Mandalore. He would have known about Obi-Wan's presence there and absolutely tried to take it over. His thought process probably would have been, hey, I can kill two birds with one stone. If I take over Mandalore, I can kill Obi-Wan and get Sidious' attention. Whenever Maul would have tried to take over Mandalore, Obi-Wan and Satine with a united Mandalore probably would have stopped him and captured him. I think that over time, Obi-Wan would have had a lot of conversations with Darth Maul about the past and about the future, eventually turning Maul to the light. Maul would have then told him everything that Sidious had planned. And there is some proof that Maul could have been turned if you watch Rebels when he dies. Tell me, is it the Chosen One? He is. He will avenge us. Once Maul finally turns and actually tells Obi-Wan his plan, it's too late. Order 66 is in motion. I think all that is pretty much what would have happened with Obi-Wan and Mandalore. Now when it comes to Anakin, it would have been much easier for Palpatine to get to Anakin if he had left the Jedi Order. 
because he could have made him his bodyguard or like an assistant type of deal. That would have led to Anakin and Darth Sidious becoming much closer through the course of the Clone Wars. Because Anakin's so tied up with Sidious, Obi-Wan would have a hard time reaching him whenever he finally learns the plans of Darth Sidious. So when Obi-Wan tries to reach out to Anakin and he can't get a hold of him, he just informs the Jedi Council. That leads to the Jedi Council going to arrest or kill Palpatine and Anakin protecting him. At this point, obviously Anakin's pretty far away from Obi-Wan, so Obi-Wan doesn't really go to Mustafar in this situation. We pretty much have no idea where to even go find Anakin. With the events of Order 66 unfolding, with a few caveats like Obi-Wan not really being in the crosshairs because he's over on Mandalore, the Empire is formed. Now, instead of Anakin being weak and stuck in a mechanical suit, He's pretty much full power. Luke and Leia still would have been born, and Anakin would have been there for the birth of his children. But Padme still poses a threat to Palpatine. Padme and Palpatine are essentially the angel and the devil on Anakin's shoulder. Palpatine doesn't like the angel on his shoulder. He wants him to fully commit to the dark side and raise his children to be in the dark side. So he has Padme assassinated without Anakin knowing. Once Anakin finds out about Padme's death, he is fully committed to the dark side. Honestly, Palpatine probably would have framed it as one of the Jedi doing it. Through the years, as Leia and Luke grow up, they're probably going to be trained in the dark side under Anakin. Meanwhile, over on Mandalore with Obi-Wan and Satine, they probably would have been building up a rebellion to fight against the Empire. Then obviously, Obi-Wan probably would have been training their children under the light side of the Force. Once the Empire realized a united Mandalore could spell the end of the Empire, they would be attacking and there would be another Mandalorian purge but a little bit different this time. Palpatine would likely send Anakin and his children to purge the Mandalorians. At the end of the Mandalorian purge, most likely what would have happened, Anakin would have killed Satine because he knows that would get to Obi-Wan. With all of this unfolding in front of Luke and Leia, Leia being the more compassionate one and definitely being her mother's daughter, would have realized that this is not how things should be. This is not okay. Leia would have turned and fled the planet with Obi-Wan, Maul, and Obi-Wan's children. Together in hiding, all these characters would have built up a rebellion to take on Anakin and Luke, with Leia's main mission being to turn her father and her brother back to the light and make them see everything that they've done is wrong. While all these characters are out hiding and building a small rebellion, Palpatine would have eventually realized that Luke poses a real threat to Palpatine. When Palpatine orders Anakin to kill Luke because he poses a threat, Anakin would have initiated his secret plan to take over the galaxy and kill Palpatine. Anakin and Luke would have confronted Palpatine, killed him, and then taken control of the galaxy like Anakin always wanted. Over the years as the rebellion formed, it would all lead up to a final battle where Leia gets Anakin and Luke near Padme's grave. During this final confrontation, Luke would have likely killed Maul and Anakin likely would have killed Obi-Wan leaving just Leia and Obi-Wan's children alive. When Anakin and Luke go to confront the final three, it's in front of Padme's grave. Anakin and Luke, being completely blinded by the dark side, wouldn't have even realized where they were until they saw her grave. All the fighting would have stopped, and there would have been a very serious conversation between Leia, Anakin, and Luke. Leia would have reminded Anakin and Luke that this is not what Padme would have wanted, and in the end, Anakin would have been completely broken because he too would realize that's not what she wanted. Anakin would have realized that eventually he became the exact thing that Padme hated. On the other hand, you have Luke, who was raised in complete pain and darkness. Luke, still being very conflicted, would have claimed that he hardly knew her, that she died before he got the chance to know her, so he would have fled. Anakin probably would have been so broken, he wouldn't have even realized that Luke ran away. That kind of leads to what I think the sequels would have become. When Anakin actually switches back to the light side and realizes all the mistakes he made, one of Obi-Wan's children likely would be extremely upset that they're not going to kill Anakin because he killed their father and their mother. That's why I think Luke would have taken advantage of that situation and recruited one of Obi-Wan's children to be his apprentice as he takes over the galaxy. Luke would have left and told everyone that his father had died and he is now the ruler of the galaxy. He is the new emperor. His new apprentice, one of Obi-Wan's children, would not want to forgive Anakin for everything he did and fight alongside him. Then Luke would have led the Empire against the rebellion led by Leia and Anakin. Throughout the course of this war, Anakin would have to prove that he is truly changed and he has to make up for everything he did. I think the way he would make up for that is refusing to fight his son in one of their confrontations and dying by his hand. Luke killing Anakin would have fully committed Luke to the dark side and there's nothing they could do to save him. But Leia probably would think differently. Leia would eventually lead the other child of Obi-Wan to go confront Luke and his apprentice. During that final confrontation in the sequels, I think they would bring back Obi-Wan's child from the darkness 
and together they would have to kill Luke because Luke was too far gone. Once the Empire was destroyed, they would together rebuild the Jedi Order in honor of Padme, Anakin, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. I know this what if probably didn't go the way you thought it would go, and I did that on purpose. I really do hope you enjoyed this video, so make sure you let me know in the comments if you want more videos like this. If you love Star Wars content, make sure you subscribe because you're gonna get it every single day from me. I appreciate you for watching. Make sure you share this with all your friends and family who also love Star Wars, and may the Force be with you.